With season four creating yet another wave of love for Stranger Things, it seemed like the perfect time to hop into Hawkins myself. Having never created anything from the universe, I wanted to start out with something that was easily recognizable and classic from season one, Eleven and her pink dress. After I set myself up with all my supplies that I'm going to need for the first part of this project, I like to paint on the first layers of color. So this is the skin, the hair, the eyebrows, mainly the large parts of color that I'm going to then have to go back in later and add detail to. For Eleven Sculpt, I really wanted to exaggerate some of those features that made her look so cute but also very distrusting in that first season. So I gave her really large eyes, really big eyebrows that are very deep set to give her that mean mug that she has for a lot of season one. If you're familiar with my work, you know that I usually use button eyes for my dolls, but I knew that with Eleven, who has such an expressive face, I was gonna have to use regular eyes. After setting down that first layer of skin color, I then go in with her hair. Her hair in the show is definitely much lighter and a lot more see-through because it's buzzed so close to her head, but obviously this is a doll and it's an exaggerated version of her character, so that's why I went really dark. I really wanted it to contrast with her skin color. Looking back, I think I should have gone a bit tanner with Eleven's skin or at least given her some warmer undertones. I ended up making up for it by just adding more blushes and different colors to her face to liven it back up, but I think that originally it would have been nice to just have a tanner base to start with. The next step in painting her face is going back in with some color. So first I'm starting out with some blue mixed with purple and gray for her under eye bags. Eleven looks like she doesn't get much sleep in season one, so I just want to accentuate those eye bags without making her look too sickly. I'm not really going for a creepy look with this doll, I just want her to look like she hasn't gotten much sleep or maybe that she's been really stressed out. So I spend a lot of time blending these colors and building them up, almost like you would with eyeshadow, and just making sure that everything looks pretty seamless. For the blended look that I need, I could go in with an airbrush and try it out, but I personally just don't really like using airbrushes. I think I just prefer the control and effect that regular brushes give me. To make sure that the blue tones I added to her face don't translate as bruising or don't age her too much, I make sure to go in with excessive blushing. So anything that's really protruding from her face, her ears, her nose, her chin, her eye bags, anything that I think might be exposed to the cold wind, I make sure to hit with a lot of pink to warm her face back up. I left this next clip in because I just wanted to show how many shades I go through when deciding on a lip color. I think lips really just set the tone for the whole face, so if they're too orange or too purple, it can really throw off the rest of the coloring that I just worked really hard on. So I clearly am going through a lot of shades in order to get to this perfect blushy, peachy pink for her lips.
I wish I would have gotten this on camera, but I honestly was really experimenting with her eyes and kept changing the direction I was going in every two seconds, so it was a lot of me just staring at her, trying to figure out what to do next for like 20 minutes. And I kept taking the doll off frame, so the clips really weren't helpful to illustrate what the steps were that I took, but I pretty much just covered them in white and then slowly went in with some very light blue layers towards the top and blended those out a bit until it looked sort of iris-like. I was really going for a Vecna version of Elle's eyes for this, and I wanted to combine season one with some of the elements of season four that stood out the most to me. I won't give any spoilers, so I'm not going to talk about Vecna too much. I will just say that I really love the look of these eyes in season four. They're really unsettling, but also pretty. So I just wanted that element to this 11 to make her a little bit, little bit creepy, but not that noticeably so that she doesn't have that cute factor. At this point, I took a break on her face because I knew that the distressing and last touches were going to have to do with stuff that was also going on with her outfit. And for continuity's sake, I wanted those colors to all be the same in case I couldn't recreate them later on. So I moved on to creating her body and her outfit. I realized that I had made her middle a bit too thin. And at that age, kids usually have a very straight torso with no real curves. So I bulked it up a bit with aluminum foil and then got to work on her dress. Her dress was really simple and her outfit in general was really simple once I decided that I wasn't going to be doing the jacket. For her dress, the main detail was this ruching in the front and back. So in order to do this, I just made really wide stitches with my machine and I was able to pull one thread slightly in order to get that fabric to bunch up how I wanted. And while normally I don't use a lot of hot glue with my outfit building, in order to get the wrinkles to lay just right in the way that I wanted them to while also hugging the torso that I had built, I used hot glue to set down the front and back parts. I also gave her these really exaggerated puff sleeves just because I felt like they were more 80s and just gave her more shape overall. For her socks, I made sure to pick out a fabric that was really thin so that I could easily manipulate the folds that they make in order to give her that look of someone who's wearing socks that are just too big for her. And for the Hawkins themed stripes, I just painted those on since using ribbon or anything else would have just made it look too big and bunchy and would have thrown off the scale of her clothing. I accidentally sculpted two fists thinking that I would have Eleven make like a really angry face and then have her two fists down at her side and sort of like a defiant look, but then I realized of course Eleven doesn't put her hands in fists, she has one that's fully splayed out doing her powers, so um, I didn't end up using that second fist and instead just kept it to one hand open and one hand shut by her side. Maybe it's because I grew up always playing with Polly Pockets or small miniature toys, but I just felt the need to give her some props to play with. This is something I've only recently started doing intentionally with my dolls, where I want to make sure that they have at least one or two props to go with them. I think that it makes the dolls a bit more interactive and fun to display because you can figure out not only ways to display the doll itself, but the props that they come with. This part always reminds me of putting on brat shoes, um, except for I don't get that satisfying click. Instead, it's more like just trying to avoid burning my fingers. If this was a different type of doll, I would work harder to make that transition between fabric and shoe more seamless, but the socks cover everything. 
Unfortunately, I don't have a store that I can ransack for miniature Eggo boxes, so I'll have to be making them myself. But the good news is, is that I found some PDF files that I can just print out from Etsy, and all I did was cut them out and score them so I could get some really clean creasing. It's probably my printer type or maybe the paper that I used, but it came out kind of dull. And I was hoping that by using some Mod Podge, I'd be able to create some sort of varnish to make the colors pop more. It didn't really do anything to make the colors pop more, but it did help to give that shine that regular cereal slash waffle boxes give. Going back to my need for props, I knew that I wanted to create an 11 wig to match what she had in the show. Obviously being made out of yarn, so it's not gonna be anything too crazy, and it was just a really easy detail to create. I started off by making her a makeshift wig cap out of washi tape that I knew would really easily peel off of her head, um, and then I'm just going in with some hot glue to attach her hair. <laughs> It did look a little funky in the beginning, um, but with more layers of hair and just kind of judging things out and, and placing things better, um, I was able to create a full head of yarn hair. Her wig was the last part of her outfit that needed to be complete before I could move into the final touches. The first was adding Elle's nosebleed that she gets during or after she uses her powers. I kept this effect really minimal because I didn't want the doll to come off too creepy and I honestly think it looks really cute. And then I'm just curing it with my UV light because I did use resin for the nosebleed just to give it more of a 3D effect. And then I'm just going in with my favorite beat up brush to dirty up her dress and her face and a little bit on her knees just to really make it look like she's been walking through the woods in search of the gate. And the final step is to varnish everything that I really want to pop. So I go ahead and I gloss up her eyes, um, the tip of her nose, her lips, and just any features that I really want to stand out and just look a little bit sweaty. <laughs> this is probably my favorite doll out of my whole collection that I've created, and I went into it with the intention of selling her at the end, but after creating her and doing the photos and just looking at her little props, I think she's gonna be sticking around a little bit longer than I originally intended. But without further ado, here is the final look of my interpretation of season 111.
If you enjoyed seeing the making of one of my dolls, please let me know in the comments. I love getting your feedback on all the kinds of content I create. For more, feel free to check out my Instagram, TikTok, all of that is linked in my bio, as well as my shop if you're ever interested in purchasing anything related to the videos that I put out. As always, thank you so much to my Patreon members, especially for your support. You really help me to continue to create content, especially long form content that takes me so long to edit and get out there. So thank you so much for your patience and just, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.